Hi, my name is Christoph Algren. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect within the Oracle Coherence Group. I have a presentation for you about the processing pattern. Uh, the processing pattern is one of the patterns in the Oracle Coherence Incubator. I'm going to cover what is the processing pattern, what problems does it solve, how is it uh, internally structured, and how can you get started with the processing pattern? So I'm going to start with what is the processing pattern? It's basically a framework to manage the processing of work uh, for a cluster of computers. As a client, you can submit a payload with work and possibly associated data for processing. And the processing pattern will manage this work, uh, make sure it gets executed and let the client know the result of the work. It is also an extensible framework allowing you to support different types of compute grid architectures. For example, you can implement support for various types of work. You can also customize how work gets dispatched as well as how it's processed. And it's, it's useful out of the box. It supports the, the JDK definitions of, of work in terms of runnables and callables. It also supports a new type of, of tasks that's called resumable tasks that can do checkpointing as well as uh, suspend and resume of tasks. So what problems does it solve? basically solves the problem of allowing a client to sub submit work and not care where it gets executed. A, um, the network of computers managed by the processing pattern will look as if it was one big computer and the client sees this, this um, network of computer as one computer. It supports computers connected to the coherence grid, which is the coherence cluster, as well as computers connected over coherence extend, uh, and those computers could possibly be connected over a wide area network. And it also supports growing and shrinking of this network of computers dynamically. And that means that you can have uh, computers connected to the processing pattern that are only available to process work uh, part of, of the day. One example could be uh, a bunch of desktop computers that are idle at night and can thus be utilized for processing during that time. So I'm going to cover how the processing pattern works. And first we're going to start with, with some terminology. A submission is a unit of work. A submission outcome is the result of the work. And a dispatcher is a class responsible for deciding what to do with the submission. And uh, it makes sure that there is an outcome for each submission. A task is a special class of submission. A task dispatcher is obviously a dispatcher that dispatches tasks. And the task processor is an entity that takes care of tasks, processes them, and generates the outcome. A client is a process that submits work and retrieves results, and a server, finally, is a process that processes the submission and generates results. So, the processing pattern uses the coherence grid uh, and stores submissions and submission results in caches in the coherence grid. And by the distributed nature of, of the coherence grid, dispatching of this work happens in parallel. And as dispatching happens uh, and gets uh, distributed in the grid, uh, processing of the actual work can happen either on the in the grid or on nodes connecting using coherence extent. And now 
we will walk through the execution of a callable in the grid. So a client, the submitter, submits a, uh, a callable in a submission. The, the callable gets stored in the submission cache and on the node where this was stored a dispatch controller will, will uh, present this submission to a dispatcher chain and finally a local executor dispatcher will be responsible to run the callable and produce the result. And the local executor dispatcher will then store the result of, of the callable in the submissions result cache. And from the submissions result cache, there will be an event generated which will uh, trigger the client to know that the result is available in the submission outcome. And for, for tasks, there is an extra level of indirection and we'll, we'll see how that works here. So the client through the processing session submits a task, it gets stored in the submission cache and a task dispatcher handles all the tasks. And the task dispatcher knows about all the task processors uh, available for, for dispatching and selects using a task dispatch policy what particular task processor will handle a particular task. So task processors can live uh, both on Querens extend nodes as well as in the grid. And this extra level of indirection allows task processors to, to actually execute work on extend nodes. And the task processor finally creates, uh, runs the task and creates the result and puts it in the submissions result cache. And here's an example of a, a deployment of a processing pattern uh, um, grid. In the middle, we have the, a coherence grid running processing pattern grid nodes. Uh, in order to, to run the processing pattern, you will always need uh, a few grid nodes at a minimum uh, because the dispatching happens where the caches uh, are stored in the grid. Connected to, to this grid through proxies, we have clients, a processing pattern client that basically only submits and retrieves results. We also have a, a number of task processor nodes connected using coherence extend uh, to the proxy. And this means that work being submitted by the processing pattern client can both uh, be running on the grid nodes as well on, as on these uh, task processors connected using coherence extend. So how do I easily get started with the processing pattern? The first thing you should do is to download the Coherence Incubator examples. In the set of Coherence Incubator examples, there is uh, a few examples for the processing pattern. One example I encourage you to explore is the pi calculation example. Another thing you should do is read the documentation on the wiki. There are both uh, descriptions of how to use the APIs uh, as well as more details on the architecture of the processing pattern. You can see the link on the screen. So that covered the basics of the processing pattern. If you have any questions to this presentation or, or any other general questions about the Querence Incubator, I encourage you to visit the Querence Incubator forum on the web. You can see the, the link on the screen, as well as the main page of the Querence Incubator on the web, uh, which you see on the screen too. Thank you very much for listening.